Hi everybody and welcome to another Linfield Coaches Cat Chat for the Linfield Baseball Program. Joe Stewart here with head baseball coach Dan Spencer. Coach, how you doing today? Doing great. Yeah, up. Yeah, a little bit. It's a, a balmy 39 degrees today. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, good day for a JV game. Uh, so, but let's talk about your uh, games this last weekend. Uh, you guys were able to come away with the win on Sunday, snapping a five-game losing streak with the 8-7 win over Puget Sound. What got you guys across the finish line? We I mean we saw some good pitching to start. Then that you know Puget Sound able to come back with some runs. The offense did look consistent all day. What do you think were the biggest takeaways on Sunday? Well, the biggest takeaways, and, and this is what we talked about at the end of the day too, is just you know the, the season is full of ups and downs, and, and we had a whole bunch of you know ups and downs in that game. You know we had to fight through some adversity and uh, you know get a lead and then feel like we're just about ready to break it open and then have them catch us with a grand slam and, and, and you know, the, the character and the toughness of our kids showed up and they, they rallied the ship, scored a run. Colt, being the tough guy that he is, you know, settled in mm-hmm. and then um, and Minoski got the last out. So it, it worked out. It was a, I mean, it was a tough win. They're all tough. Yeah. It was a, it was a tough, hard fought. You know, I showed a lot of character. When you're still in a bit of a rebuilding process sure. like this, what kind of role does resiliency play throughout the course of a season? Well, it's huge. It's huge because, um, you know, baseball is a sport of, you know, ups and downs in every day. And, and so if, if, if little things bother you and if, uh, you know, a little bit of adversity knocks you down, you, you have to get up. If you, if you can't get up, then you, you're, you're in the wrong sport because it's, well, that's just the way the game is. Um, so I think that especially when you're playing with, you know, a whole lot of freshmen and sophomores. Yeah. Playing with a bunch of freshmen and sophomores and pitching with a bunch of freshmen and sophomores. You know, when you think about the pitching staff, we have two seniors, Colt and Sam Adams. And so you're pitching with guys that are riding that roller coaster. You're constantly trying to make sure that you understand that they're talented. They understand they're talented guys, trying to keep the confidence high, uh, trying to get them to learn from mistakes, and, and just trying to get them better for their next outing. One of those guys is sophomore John Over, who's had a pretty solid start on Sunday. I thought one of the better starts we've seen out of the staff this year. Made it four and two thirds, only giving a one earned run, struck out six. Uh, what did you like out of him, and how do you replicate that? Not just with him, but with the rest of the staff going forward. Right. No, he was very. He's been consistent. And John's a second year academic guy. But he's a freshman all right. around. Right. And you know, he, what he did is he basically he could throw. He threw three pitches for strikes. And he moved the ball around. And if we'd have taken care of a ground ball, you know, he, in that inning he would have gone five or uh-huh. five plus. But he he uh, he had a good start against Eastern, solid. He, he wasn't as good in California, but he's good. He's we, we expect him to be consistent, you know. And the thing I think the recipe is the same for, for all of our pitchers and starting pitchers. You know, get ahead in the count, throw strikes, engage the hitter early, and then and then have a second pitch. And have a second pitch that you can go to to finish the hitter off, or have a second pitch that you can go to to get back in account. And if they, if you can do that, you're going to be you're going to be successful because there's a there's enough stuff here for us to be good. Right. Um, and, and down the road, it'll be better. We'll be, we'll be better. We'll be able to aim our sights a little higher and say, hey, you know, now we're going to we got a chance to go out and punch ten guys out today. And you know, we're not there yet, but. That's the goal. Yeah, you could see that kind of potential with the, with the staff this weekend. I thought uh, offensively shifting gears here. I mean, that has been a, you know you got a little bit more experience there with with, with your with your position players. Uh, we saw a big day out of Tanner Jacques, and he leads the team in hits right now. Brandon Passions leading the uh, team in uh, average so far. Skinner in total bases uh, and OPS. What have you seen of the strengths of the lineup offensively so far? Well, I think the strengths are. The strengths are, are, are kind of what you, those guys you touched on, you know, and I think it's it's interesting to mention that too. You know, Tanner, Tanner was a really good player for us last year. He didn't have a very good offensive year, yeah. but he was so valuable the way he defended and leaded and led. And and now he's you know he's offensive. He can run and uh, just you know he's having a great year. And he's a, and he's an old guy. Yeah. So fifth year. Yes. And so he's a fifth year guy doing what fifth year guys do. And 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 then you have uh, you know skin and he's getting better. He's still a work in progress too. He, he he's working on cutting down strikeouts. For a guy with that kind of power, you want him to put more balls in play. Absolutely. And and he's getting, but he's getting better, and you can see some progress. Passion's passion is here for the exact reason that some of the things he's doing is because he's he's a junior college guy. He's older. He's had college at bats, mm-hmm. even though he you know he went through the COVID and they didn't play as many games as they should have down there. You know, at Modesto College. They were still practicing and playing, practicing every day, and, and, and so he was getting swings and practice, and 
you know, he's older, so he brings us some, there's some stability there. You've got three legitimate options at catcher, it seems. You've got the right. talented freshman, Nathan Kassler, yep. maybe your best defensive option in Brett Schoener, right. and, of course, one of your great leaders in Wyatt Smith, sure. fifth-year senior, two-sport athlete. We all know what he can do right. on the field. Right. Uh, do you see that it's probably going to be a bit of a rotation uh, going forward? We saw all three guys get some action this weekend. Right. Uh, what, what, what do you think? How's that going to be shaken out over the next couple I of weeks? Think that we found that, I think we found that we're going to play. We're gonna, we, we need to figure out ways to um, – We've, we've talked about going back, going to a more a two-man rotation there with Kassler and Jonah and then moving Wyatt to both the corners of the infield okay. and be able to play some at both spots. Yeah. And finding a way then in a rotation with Passion and Horner at both corners. So we think that's a we, – we think, you know, with Wyatt, you know, he, he, he just, you know, he comes in, he plays football at a high level, plays quarterback at a high level all fall, into the winter, in the playoffs, um, you know, and then he comes out, and, and we put him behind the plate, start banging balls, right. and banging balls off his chest, and trying to get him ready to catch in a month. And you know, that's a hard thing. Absolutely. It, it'd be like dragging one of these baseball players out and saying, "Hey, we want you to play quarterback in a month." Go throw for 300 yards. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's not. And I think Wyatt, being the kind of kid he is, he just rallied up and said, "No, if that's what you need me to do, I'm in." Uh huh. But I think it, affect, it affected him. It's affecting him offensively. I think that there's he spent a lot of time concentrating on on, on being a defender behind the plate. And if we can get him to just, you know, not have to worry about those things, play first, play third, hit, then maybe we can see, you know, some of that offense that we need to see out of him. Nice, yeah. And, and the other two guys are, you know, really pure catchers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and with Kassler in particular, how valuable is a, is a guy that, you know, he's got a good swing. You know, obviously he's got to get those college at-bats and, sure. and become more consistent. Yes. But how valuable how valuable of a player could he turn into down the road as both a guy defensively and offensively? Well, I think that Kassler, and I think the biggest thing, and all the things you said are very accurate, but the biggest thing he brings is he's got huge people skills, huge leadership ability. Okay. He, he's got, he, you know, he's going to run the thing. Now, whether he's going to run it in a week, or next fall or you know, next spring, he, he's gonna. Yeah. One day you're gonna wake up and he's just gonna run this whole thing. Okay. And, and you know, and be able to and be that guy yeah. because of, and not just because of the kind of player he is, but the kind of because of the kind of person he is, and because of the kind of worker he is. And I think Bubba's a Bubby and Bubba and he can you know complement each other. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Well, that's great to hear about. I mean, obviously both of those guys on sure. the younger side. Uh, looking ahead to this weekend, a Lewis and Clark team that has been hitting the ball very well, put up big numbers against Whitman uh, this last weekend. What's going to be the key there? Getting the offense going or trying to keep Lewis and Clark more in check? Well, I think the, I think the any time when you start talking about you know winning baseball, it's really hard to go in with a plan that, hey, we're going to have to go in there and try to outscore somebody. And I think you might talk about that as coaches, but you can't sell that. That's a hard sell to, sure. you know, just over the long run. And, and, and winning, when you, especially when you start talking about you know, in the future when we're ready to win big games and ready to go into playoffs, you got to think about how do you minimize the score. And so that's always our goal. So we have to figure out how to, you know, keep the score down. So that's the, that's the challenge. We need to keep the score down. They, they are very offensive. Um, you know, they've got, they've got three or four old guys in the lineup, guys who've had a lot of at-bats, and, you know, they're at home. And so it will be, it'll be a challenge, that's for sure. Yeah, and that is a, another squad that is certainly on the rise in the ever-competitive right. Northwest Conference. Yes. Once again, that's the Wildcats this weekend at Lewis and Clark up in Portland. They'll be providing live coverage for you on the Pio stream. Coach, thanks for your time today. You